In this video, I want to talk about communication with other team members and how I approach my production process in podcasting. In my view, one of the most important aspects of working in creative environment in a team of creative people is healthy communication. What I want to focus on are practical tips we can use when we're talking about communication during the production workflow. Let's start by painting a scene. Podcasting is a lonely journey. Even on the big ones, like established podcasts, the team is fairly small. I'm not even talking about like one person podcast. As opposite to if you work in production in TV show or movies, where there can be hundreds of people with defined roles. So everyone knows what they're doing, what the responsibilities are. So that's a bit easier. In podcasting, it's not like that. People wear many hats and each day will require something a little bit different from you. So it's just another way of approaching creative work. As we were recording this video, we have more people on the team, or Case File, Case File Presents, that help me with the audio. At the beginning, it wasn't like that at all, it was just me. But the final decisions on the production, on the mix, on the vibe of the show, the music, still end with me. And that means there is no one next to me holding my hand. There's no one to supervise me, there's no one above me to tell me off. Correct me if I make a mistake or give me a nice feedback. When there's a mistake, that's on me. When there is an issue in audio or production pipeline, that's me. When there's something that people don't like, be a part of the mix, music, whatever, you guessed it, me again. Now this is fine when you start out because you can experiment, you can make a mistake, and even when you got a little bit of audience, they are forgiving. They know you're still learning and growing. When you get to the stage like we're at now, when you've got you know an established show, a lot of people listening, and the team of people that rely on you to do your job is a different conversation because suddenly you are exposed. And suddenly you might find yourself under a lot of pressure. Pressure from advertisers, pressure from the networks, pressure from other team members you know, that depend on you. Because if you mess up, you let them down. Now, don't get me wrong here, I'm not trying to paint myself as a victim. Oh, poor me doing this awesome job and there's so much pressure, etc. Instead, I want to talk about, okay, so it's there's all this pressure and demands and there's a lot of people listening to the shows. When I mess up, I mess up. We've talked about that. On the other hand, I don't think I'm the best producer in the world. I don't think I'm the most talented music composer or editor or anything like that. So how can you then marry that pressure with, okay, that's just me just doing this job and still deliver the good show that people enjoy. What I done then, I had to design a system that allows me to do that. So it allows me to work without a pressure and still deliver on the vision that I have for the project, but also the vision that aligns with everybody else. And there are a few things that I came up with that I want to share with you and they may help you in your journey as well. So number one is I value and expect input from everyone. And it's cool to get an input from other people who work in audio because they can pinpoint mistakes, like certain technical things, and that's cool. But what I value even more is an opinion and feedback from people who don't know anything about the audio because they will tell me how they feel. And if something feels wrong, about a particular scene or the mix or a bit of music or whatever, they will let me know. Two is kind of cliche, but you leave your ego at the door. Working creative environment, you pour yourself into the project. And it's not just a oh, technical bit doing something, it's personal. There, you put your emotion into it, you put your effort, you put everything that you go, you wanna deliver. And if someone criticize it, it feels personal. It's like they're attacking you, not what you've done. Now, you cannot think like that. You have to be willing to change quickly and kill your baby, so to speak, and just move on. And it hurts. It can hurt a lot, but it is crucial if you want to do this type of work. And number three is involve people from the beginning. And this is the point I want to drive art and I'll talk about it in a future videos as well and I want to stop here for a little bit and explain why I took this approach and how does it work for me. Ideally as a creative you want to lock yourself in a room and then do your work. 
unfortunately, most projects, most creative projects require teams to work on them. It's not just one person. I compare podcasting to production to movies or on TV series, albeit in a very, uh, you know, it's a minimized version of it. To explain it better, let's talk and think about two scenarios. You know, the same project and your task to produce a podcast, maybe edit, maybe do a bit of music on it, and then produce and mix. In scenario number one, you lock yourself in a room as an artist, as a creative, and then you work. Pour your heart and soul into the project. You spend weeks perfecting it, editing the dialogues, writing the music, mixing, mastering, doing what you do best. After weeks of doing it though, you then present it, the final, to your team. And they don't like it. Or even worse, they are okay about it. Like, oh, it's all right. Now that hurts because one, you put so much effort and time and blood and sweat into it that it feels personal. Like why they don't love it as much as I do. And two is now, how can you go back? Where do you even start? Because you had this vision that you work towards. What, at what point do you now start changing it? It's a very difficult situation to find yourself in. One that I don't recommend. Let's now think about the second scenario. You start the same product. You do the initial cut of the dialogue, working on pacing a little bit, you send it out, draft one. The team listens, they send back your feedback notes, your QC notes, you look at them, do your changes, do your cleanups, a bit of processing, you send it out, draft two. They send back your notes. In the meantime, you work on some music. You start putting some cues there. Send it out, draft three, notes again. Oh, we don't like that one. What about this one? This is too loud. Yeah, no worries. I'm going to change it. You do your first mic, send it out. Second, send it out. And you get me until we arrive at the final version of the project. Let me ask you, which approach in your mind is better? Or a better question. In which scenario you, you likely feel less pressure, you are not so emotionally involved and connected to a particular cue or a moment and you're more likely to adjust and change it up and try different things. Well, let me answer it for you. Second one, and this is how I work. Because I involve people from the beginning and it's a collaborative process, I want their input, I want our visions to align and I want them to tell me if I mess up if there is a mistake. And also, because I involve them at the each stage of production, I'm not married to a particular cue or a scene that I developed or a bit of music. It's flowing, it's changing all the time. And I'm happy with it. I'm happy because when I see it changing from my eyes and ears, I know it's getting better with each iteration until we arrive at the final draft. And yes, yeah, sometimes it's eight drafts, sometimes it's three, but I guarantee at the end, everyone will be happy. And there'll be no arguments, no dramas, no sudden changes, because it was a gradual process. It's something that took me years to develop. And you might think, so, well, that's obvious, you should do that. But no, it's not obvious. It's not obvious at all. I've tried both scenarios and believe me, it's always better to involve people from the beginning. The whole team, get as many different diverse ideas as you can, work towards the same goal. Involve everyone that wants to be involved.